sick are you of answering questions about weight right now? What do I look like, dude? Do I look sick of it? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for weigh-ins. I feel good. Energy levels are great. My weight's on point. Uh, the, the weight cut's been even easier than I expected. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's been a lot of work. You know, it's been a 12-week camp. You know, uh, but the weight cut's over. It's done. You know, I did it over the 12 weeks. Now it's just some some secrets to the trade and uh, a little bit of water displacement. I'm there, man. Can you tell us how far you have to go, where, where you're at right now? Oh, I'm waking up within striking distance. I could have made weight today if I wanted to, you know? So uh, no problem at all, man. I woke up 135, feeling fresh, feeling good. Uh, media was easy. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I've been closer this week to 125s than I usually show up 135s. And it's because, obviously, there's the unknowns, right? Like. First time we fight in 125, so I want to make sure I did everything perfect. So me being so strict, it made the weight cut easy. Was it harder than you thought? I mean, you were always no, confident easier. you could do this. It was easier than I thought. Really? Yeah, man. Like I said, it took a lot of work. I figured there'd be some hiccups, like my, my body not wanting to give it up. Um, but I owe that to Sam Calvita. You know, Sam Calvita is a straight-up genius when it comes to the body and how it works. Um, anywhere from my diet to the ways I'm working out to my supplementation. Um, I feel good, man. I feel really good. But you, you know, all of us say, man, how do we know TJ is going to be 100% on fight night? I mean, is that a fair question? Like, if you're from the outside looking in, do you understand why people are, are worried that you're not going to be TJ Dillashaw? That's why there? That's why this fight's exciting, right? That's why everyone wants to talk about it. It's like, that gives a little X factor. But um, as you can tell now, man, I'm close right now, and I got no problem. No problem at all. I feel powerful. I'm, I'm stronger than I was my last camp. That's no joke. I put up new PRs in my, my snatch, put new PRs in my clean and press. So I'm powerful. I'm explosive. You know, I'm setting new lactate threshold uh, levels on the bike. Uh, I'm holding on to everything, man. And last for me, what was the key to that? I mean, why do this, right? Why put yourself through all this, man? I mean, all the risk is on you, right? Why, why did you do this? Was it proving people wrong? Is it about the belt? Is it about, well, I mean, what is it? Oh, uh, it's just all of it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, first I was chasing uh, Demetrius Johnson, you know? Art was saying he was the greatest pound for pound fighter. That's my that's my spot. I really believe that's my spot. And so I was chasing him down. He wouldn't take the fight. Henry Cejudo wanted to call me out after the fight. Uh, said he was going to come to 35s and fight me. We offered it to him. We asked him, come to 35s. He turned it down. Knew he was scared. Now he's shaking his boots that I'm able to make the weight. And you know, he wants to make up any excuse that I'm going to miss it or I feel bad that I guess I look like a cross country runner. Maybe Pee Wee Herman, but I think Pee Wee Herman dresses to the nines. To be, to be honest, he always looks good. So. Um, man, it's just all of it. The second belt, my legacy being known as the greatest pound for pound fighter. Is this something you would want to do again though? Because obviously you work really hard at all yeah. times, but you've had to do that extra layer of discipline, uh, you know, everything really, really strict, can't cut any corners whatsoever, make this weight. Is this something you want being like your lifestyle so consistently having to make this weight often or do you like having that little cushion at 135? Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see what, what uh, comes up with the, the biggest uh, the biggest fight, the biggest names. Who's who's gonna threaten my my throne the most? You know, is it gonna be at 35s? Is it gonna be at 25s? Is it gonna be moving up to fight Max? I got a lot of options. I got a lot of things that, like I said, I want to leave the sport the greatest of all time. And by doing that, I gotta I gotta fight the guys that are gonna. People are gonna ask like, is he gonna win? You know. What have you thought of Henry in the lead up to this fight? He's been a bit more out of maybe a bit more brash than usual. You guys got a little more attention on him now, you know. So it's like maybe he feels like he has to. Um, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a sentence he said without talking about his gold medal. You know what I mean? How, I mean, I know he's got a big head, but he also has a big head. You know what I mean? Like, the guy's crazy, dude. Uh, but that's what happens when you get in the limelight, you know? So you let it, let, uh, let him soak it up for a couple more days until it's gone. Did any part of you feel like or wish that it would have been DJ and to give him that first loss and not? A little bit, you know, because he was at that pound for pound spot. You know, he was the one that was I was chasing. Um, you know, but... Uh, Suhudo beat him, and, uh, and and he's a gold medalist. You know, I, I have respect for him for that. You know, wrestling is a very, very, very tough sport. It's the hardest sport still today I've ever done. And so when we get that medal, I got respect for that. You know, but uh, it don't matter when we get in the cage. And you mentioned it earlier, but if you come on with a seventh two-way champion in UFC history, what would it mean for you and your legacy? Everything, man. That's the point. Um, you know, breaking records. I'm the first one ever to go down and do it. Put that much work in. Um, it means everything, you know, my legacy, it means everything. Are you guys really pressure? trying to save the flyweight division? It must be the savior. Does it mean anything to you to maybe end the flyweight division? I could care less, man. You know, if the UFC wants me to be an assassin, if they want to hire me to go down there and end it, I'll end it. And if I'm the champion, champion of both weight classes, bring it up anyways. Um, if they don't cut it, awesome too. I, I, I don't I don't really care. What's more about myself? You know, this is a selfish sport. You do go in there yourself. You get paid yourself. Um, obviously, I got a team, Juan Archuleta, the training lab that helped me get there. But when you're out there and you're doing it, it's your name. It's you're by yourself. You know, it's uh, 
highest highs and the lowest lows and you share that with yourself. Do you entertain the idea of maybe defending the flyweight title though, or are you, are you sure. saying this is one and done? Nah, man, like I said, it's whatever opportunity comes, you know, whatever whatever's makes the most sense that's going to challenge my name. Is the weight that you see enough for you to do it multiple times? Yeah. I mean, dude, I feel great. You know, I took a fight on a fight's notice of normal, a normal time. It wasn't like I had like, oh no, I need more time. You know, like I took it on a normal basis. So. Where do you feel at your best? What do you think is the best version of you? I feel great now. I mean, I feel good at. I mean, I feel awesome at 35s. I feel good at 25s. I don't think it really matters what way to go. It's more about your belief and getting out there. You know. All done. Thanks, Thanks, you. Cool. Thanks guys. Hey guys, I really appreciate you guys' time, and uh, I'll see you soon.